two videos in the same day. It must be Christmas. <laughs> Let's go for it. Alright guys, how's it going? I hope you're doing very well. Now, it's quarter past twelve at midnight. I just want to kind of basically have a conversation, a little bit of a chat with you guys. And I'll talk about... I'll talk about moving software. Now, a lot of people don't really talk about this in 3D, or when they do, they advertise it as moving from Modo to Blender 3D. How I done it? I'm not going to give you any of that kind of advice. But what I'll do is I'll kind of point you in the right direction and say, this might be the best thing to do. As you can tell, these videos are always unscripted, so let's just quietly get into it. So, in front of my screen is actually Lightwave 2018. Now, for 10 years, it must be... Yeah, it could be easily. Lightwave was pretty much my workhorse. I was pretty active in their community. I ran a quite big Facebook group, stuff like this. I used to do Friday nights, Light Wiki Live. I miss talking to the Lightwave guys. That's absolutely fantastic bunch of people. Don't get me wrong, there was there was tension now and again, and I kind of get bored towards the end of it. Not even get bored towards the end of it. I just kind of the writing was on the wall for Lightwave for me. So I had to make the decision, do you stick with one piece of software? Now a lot of people might have argued, why didn't you go with Maya, why didn't you go with Max? Because they were the big contenders at the time. But when I started learning 3D, Maya and Max weren't, they weren't as prominent as they were at the time. Lightwave was pretty much the big hitter at the time. And to be fair, it's a pretty solid piece of software. And it does have a good community behind it. Uh, although one thing it is, it's slowly, slowly, slowly dwindling. It's kind of fallen in on top of itself, and that's not through any fault of its own. Uh, that's partly to do with New Tech or VizRT, who it is now, uh, pretty much abandoning the software or not supporting the community to its full potential. Now, Lightwave get used in big films from 300 to Flubber to. It's a workhorse, it is a workhorse. But Maya and Autodesk kind of. They started dominating. They started dominating probably. 2010 onwards, pretty much. I think if you had to pick the good times for Lightwave, it was 2002, 2003, that's, that, that's kind of their heyday. And then it kind of went Max and Maya, and now pretty much Houdini, I would argue. It's pretty much the go-to application if you want to work in the industry. Now, I don't work in the industry. I'm not a big fan of studios. Uh, well, I couldn't work in a studio, but... I like working for myself, I like being able to take the time off, I like being able to sit and play with the kids, stuff like this. As long as I make my money for the year, I'm happy. Anything else is a bonus. So yeah, that's pretty much. So anyway, bit of the backstory. So moving from one piece of software to another. Now you might be a freelancer. You might be thinking the exact same thing. Now when it comes to being a freelancer, you really do need to think about... You need to think about how much you're spending. Now, a lot of people will argue, and I'll argue this myself, if you're using something like Houdini with a freelancing project, it probably pays for itself. You've probably got that big enough client that, yeah, you can you can afford that. You can afford that, definitely. But the landscape is changing, and it's changing probably for the better, to be honest. The open source software or free software it's becoming much more prominent. It's becoming much more used on a daily occasion. Now, to use the word industry standard, it's a pretty broad definition. It's broad strokes. So I'm not going to use industry standard as a thing. I'm going to point out maybe the benefits of going from Modo to something like Blender. Now, Modo's a great modeling tool. It's actually a really good. It's a good tool in general. It's a bit sluggish in places, but it's pretty good. And Lightwave kind of echoes that at the same time. Now, for me, Lightwave, the development stopped way, way before 2018. I would say 2016. And if you actually go into the history of Lightwave and the stuff that happened behind it, it kind of snowballed. And the software got left behind. And this is where Blender started to overtake it. Or in my opinion, this is where I think Blender started to overtake it. Now, I see a lot of Lightwave users, people I've known for years, basically saying the same argument. Yeah, it gets the job done. And that, that's fair enough. If you're making your money with the software, kudos to you. You're not going to lose anything in that regard. But what I think you might lose is the market will move on. Like doing an interactive bullying inside of Lightwave is absolutely fucking nightmare. 
It's just a nightmare. In Blender, it is a piece of piss. And of course, you're going to have positive and negatives when it comes to things like software. But it's became too old in the tooth, specifically for me. So I switched to Blender a few years ago. And to be honest, I'll probably never look back. Don't get me wrong. If you use Houdini, I think you'll always use Houdini. And I think if you use Maya or Max, you're probably in the same kind of category. You won't switch. But there's a lot of users who sit in between Modo, Lightwave, SketchUp, a few other applications as well. And they see Blender as being very attractive. And to be fair, it is pretty damn attractive, especially for the price. So yeah, back to my original point. If you're a freelancer, yeah, you might be able to afford that software. And it might be the quickest tool for you, Cinema 4D, for example. Even though it's pretty expensive, it's great for motion graphics. It seems kind of cliche to say that, to be honest. No, oh, Cinema 4D does motion graphics. I mean, when did that? When did it come into that title? When? Who decided that's what it does? It does way more. It's good at rigging and stuff like this, or it used to be good at rigging. Uh, same with what used to be really good as well. Not Moment of Inspiration, Messiah. Moment of Inspiration is a CAD stuff. Messiah. Messiah used to be a really good program, especially for things like fur. It was way ahead in terms of Lightwave and Blender at the time. So you might be considering moving software. So what advice would I give? If you're in a commercial project, do the commercial project with it. Now, it sounds kind of risky, and it is risky. But it's the only way you learn, and it's the only way you kind of figure out its pitfalls and its deliveries. If you've got a commercial gig, just do it in the software, and that's what I ended up doing. I ended up doing product renders. Now, product renders, you may just think, ah, you set up an HDRI, you do some lighting, you get the model, you do the textures, everything's go, but it's a bit more complicated than that, especially when you're using things like CAD data. And Blender's actually quite good at handling CAD data. It's quite good at the topology. Uh, for example, if I take a million polygon object into Blender, It'll display an EV no, no problem. If I take a million polygon into a light wave, it generally brings up a bounding box and thinks, nah, it's a bit hard. And then with light wave, you have issues with normals and stuff like this because light wave is technically two applications. Well, it's actually three, but it's two. The main one is layout, so that does most of the animation. It does your weight and stuff like this. But then you have the model inside of it. And I actually like the split workflow. A lot of people argue against it, and I can see why. If you kind of migrate the two, you end up with something like Blender, and they kind of see each other. But when you're in Modeler, you know that you're actually modeling. The only thing is the modeling tools became very stagnant. You can get by, and to be honest, most of the Lightwave modelers I know are absolutely exceptional at modeling. They're old school. They understand polyflow. They understand how topology should be. I think it's probably one of the things, but at the moment if you had to buy Lightwave it's $900. Now where is the attraction there? There is absolutely no attraction there. <laughs> you would just go for Blender. And when it comes to Blender the community is way larger, way larger. There's much more add-ons and plugins, stuff like this. And when it comes to learning content, there's a hundred times more learning content for Blender. I mean you only need to look in YouTube yourself, which is generally another reason why I've kind of you know, taken a step back from tutorials and just like talking some shit. So the advice is, throw yourself into it, just put all your chips in and just play that hand and try and get a commercial job out the window. Now you might struggle at first and people will argue, yeah, well I could use this software faster. Yeah, you probably could. A lot of that is to do with your memory and you need to retrain your brain to think, get out of this workflow. Now when I first moved to Blender, like moving the camera, I found an absolute nightmare compared to Lightwave, because Lightwave you can, it's dead easy. But... Then I started getting used to the way the camera works inside Blender and then I moved to B4 Artist and the camera's perfect now. I, I honestly couldn't complain about it. And then you start to find things that other software does better than the software that you were previously using. Like scene setup seems to be a little bit more organised in Blender and you have collections, you have linking, you have appending, you have stuff like this. I mean you can kind of do that inside of Lightwave but you're kind of limited. And then people say, well, you can use this application. Like when it comes to doing something like decals or something, you need to go and spend $100 to get that plug in. It's just, it's not worth it, to be honest. Especially, I wouldn't, I kind of feel a bit guilty about this, but I wouldn't, I wouldn't promote anybody to spend any money on Lightwave at the moment. Not when you have Blender as an alternative. But I think it is great in that regard for Blender. That anybody has an entry level into Blender, they can easily 
open up the software, they can download it for absolutely nothing. And like I said, there's a whole bunch of training material. So there's no barriers. The only barrier is really you stopping yourself. So, okay, you might not be a freelancer. So let's say you just want to learn software. Again, you are the barrier. Just throw yourself into the deep end. Pick a project, pick a small project, even if it's just making a cube, go from left to the right. Or maybe it's just you want to work on rigging, learn how to do rigging. I actually recommend a lot of people to learn how to do rigging because it's quite a good job especially if you get into it and there's always somebody looking for somebody who can rig now i don't touch rigging i can set up a rig i can do the weight and stuff like this but i'm not a rigger if you're getting into it pick one subject and learn it extremely well if you want to be a modeler learn modeling as much as possible maybe you just want to set up lights and just be a lighting director that could be your choice so yeah the advice is a bit shit to be honest and it sounds a bit it's a bit obvious you know what I mean? Sometimes people need to point out the obvious just for you to kind of click in it. So if you want to learn Blender, yep, just, you've got to just go to the wall with it, man. Just throw as much stuff and see if it sticks. You might not like it, to be honest. You might go back to Modo, for example, and just think, this is easier for me. And Blender's not for everybody. And that's one thing people forget when people have arguments in the comments. Oh, well, Blender's free. Yeah, it might be free, but it might not suit their workflow. It might not just click with them. They might not understand some of the crazy workflows, like hiding the apply button and the modifiers, stuff like this. <laughs> that drives me crazy. So if you've moved from any kind of software, if you've went from Maya to Blender, that's a pretty big jump. Let me know about it. Do me a favor, guys. Like the video, subscribe to the channel. If you haven't already, follow me on Twitter. You know what to do. Take care.